let us now start programming our game. First, we are going to create an empty game object, which I'm going to name Spawner. We are going to position it 5 on the X and 14 on the Y axis. So this is really important. Again, this is because we are moving our, well, Tetris objects by one unit. So this spawner needs to be right here. We are also going to go in our scripts folder, create spawner scripts folder, inside of it create the spawner script and attach it on the spawner. Double click it so that we can open it here. Here we are going to have a serialize, so serialize field is going to be private, so private game object array are Tetris objects. So Tetris objects. What we are also going to have here is a function that will spawn random objects. So this is going to be a public void spawn random. This is going to, as I said, spawn a random game object. So here we are going to create an int index is equal to random dot range from zero up to Tetris. So Tetris objects dot length. And we are simply going to say instantiate passing here our Tetris objects and the element that's at index. For the position, we are going to use the position of the spawner, which is five on the X and 14 on the Y that we set up right here. So five and 14 and going back in the script. So transform that position and for the rotation quaternion identity. And we are going to call it here inside of the start function. And let me just go here in our spawner, select our Tetris game objects array. We have seven of them. And we are going to drag and drop each of them or simply click on the circle and well add one after another so we have i now we have j after that we have l next we have o next we have s t and finally z so this is practically for our spawner if i run the game now we are going to see one game object spawned here which is our z again if i rerun it we have another one, which in our case is L. So we see it here. It's a little bit above the camera, but that's how it's supposed to be. So if I run the game now again, we have another game object. So anyway, our spawner is working. Next, what we need to do is we need to create here a matrix script. So here I'm going to say matrix scripts which is actually going to be our grid. And here I'm going to name it matrix grid or something like that. So we can name it matrix grid. It's not important. So we are simply going to name it like this. Double click it so Mana develop will open it. Practically inside of this script, we can remove Mana behavior because it's not going to be attached on any of our game objects. And here I'm going to tag it with matrix grid. And let me just give a little bit space here because I like to work this way because it's not going to attach or it's not going to be attached on any of our game objects, we can remove the start and update function. And here we are practically going to create the grid that's going to store our, well, Tetris game objects, because when we run the game, we are going to continue to create our Tetris game objects when one of them reaches the end, so on and so forth. And we need a place to store them so that we can know which one of them hits the bottom, which one, well, we need to destroy, so on and so forth. For that, we are going, going excuse me, to use this matrix grid class. Okay, now for our matrix grid class, we need a couple of variables. So we are going to create a public static int, which is going to be row. We're going to have 10 of those and public static int column, which is equal to 20. We are also going to have, well, a public transform array, which is going to be a two dimensional array, which is going to be our grid and it's equal to new transform and we are going to pass the row and we are going to pass the column. So this is what we have here practically. So our grid and we have the rows and the columns for our grid. Next, we are going to create a public static class that returns a vector to which we are going to name round vector and we are going to pass a vector to V as an argument. Now, what this function actually does 
it will return a vector with rounded coordinates. So I will first type return new vector2 and here we are going to pass mathf.round and here I'm going to say v.x and also mathf.round and here I'm going to pass v.y which is practically the parameter here that we are passing. Now what this actually means here? Well, if we go back here in our Unity editor, you know that we are, well, positioning our camera at this certain position. We also created, if you remember, our Tetris objects using rounded coordinates. So practically, we have created it at x0 and y1, y0, x1, so on and so forth those are rounded coordinates now the rotation so when we rotate our objects because we know in tetris we can rotate the objects in order to position them however we want it to be well if we use the rotation the rotation can mess up our rounds so practically x can be for example so here i can create float x this is just for the example is rounded at one but if we use the rotation it can then be one by one or one comma one so we don't want that what this mathf.round function does if for example x is 1.1 so if we pass here 1.1 it will round it to a whole number so it will reduce it to one and it will be that number so practically as i said it will simply remove this number after the comma so it will be a whole number that's what we are doing here using our round vector next we are going to create a public static class that returns or excuse me function that returns a boolean is inside border which takes a vector to position and this reminds me that our transform here also grid also needs to be static so simply set it to be public static now here we are simply going to say return and what we are going to do is we are going to check and we are going to cast this in an integer so if our position dot x is greater than or equal to zero so here we are casting our well position x to an integer because we want it to be a rounded number again so for example if we pass 1.2 we are casting it to an integer which is going to reduce it to 1 and here we are going to check and if our position dot x again we need to cast it here so int and if our position x is less than the row and also what we need to do is we need to say again casting it if our position dot y is greater than or equal to zero so this is going to return if we are inside the border so if i go back here these are our borders so the red lines are our borders it's not going to allow our well tetris objects to go outside of these borders that's why we are testing if we are inside of those borders and we are using this function right here so practically again casting here to an integer to round it to a whole number if it's greater than or equal to zero and the same number is less than the row which we defined here and also our position y is greater than or equal to zero then practically we are going to be inside of bounds otherwise we are not next we are going to create a public static delete row function which takes an int y as an argument so here i'm going to well practically create a new function so public static delete row let me see what i did wrong so public static void actually so public static void excuse me i was wondering what i did wrong anyway here we have our delete row function here we are simply going to see for int x is equal to zero as long as x is less than the row we are going to say x plus plus or plus plus x so why we are doing it like this we're practically we are first going to increment the x so we know that plus plus after the x means take the x and after that give it well well one add it one so plus plus but this right here means first add one to it then take x 
So here what we are going to do is we are simply going to call our game object dot destroy function and here we are going to use our grid and we are going to pass the x and the y dot game object. So we are going to destroy the game object that's at x and the y. And here because we have destroyed that object we need to say grid x and y is now equal to null in order to inform now our grid that we have a null game object in there because we have destroyed the game object for that transform or for this array now we don't have nothing there so we need to set it to be equal to null that's what we are practically doing here now we are going to create a public static void decrease row function which again takes int y as a parameter and we are passing the y as a parameter because we are decreasing rows and here we are deleting rows we are never going to delete a column and that's why we are using one column to destroy all rows the same way here so here we are going to perform another for loop so for int x is equal to zero as long as x is less than the row we are going to increment first x and then well use it first here what we are going to do is we are going to check if our grid so not gizmos grid again not geared but grid and the element that's at x and the y if it's not equal to null then what we are going to do because we want to decrease the row we need to move one row down so here we are simply going to say grid x and because we are moving one row down we are using y minus one is now equal to grid and the element that's at x and and the y and now what we need to do is we need to set this element to be equal to null because as i said we are decreasing the row so we are moving this element down by one row that's why we are using y minus one but now the row that we are decreasing needs to be equal to null so each element that's at that row needs to be equal to null that's what we are practically doing here again here we are moving one row down so we are using y minus one so if we move one column down we have we have well one row less and we are setting that to be equal to x and y so grid x and y and now we are setting that x and y to be equal to null to decrease it practically now we need to update the position so we need to say grid and the element that's at x and y minus one which is previously or which is actually this element right here that position plus equals new vector 3 because we moved it one position down we need to update its position so for the x we are not going to touch anything for the y is going to be negative 1 and for the z also we are not going to touch anything because we are moving this element at this position right here so now that same element we need to update its position because for example if the position was i don't know one for the x two for the y now we are setting the position to be at one for the x and one for the y by decreasing it by one and we are decreasing it by one because as i said from the beginning we are going to move all our game objects by one single unit and that's why we are practically doing it like this now we are going to create a public static void function which we're going to name decrease rows above which is also going to take an int y as an argument so practically we are going to use this function here in order to decrease our rows and we have explained well a little before what this function actually does so here i'm going to say for int i is equal to y as long as i is less than the column so here we are going to say plus plus and we are going to say y and it's not column but it's columns so excuse me for that let me go back here so actually it is a column so here so now what we are going to do as i said we are simply going to call our decrease row function and here we are going to pass i in order to decrease that row and i have already explained what we are doing here next what we are going to do is we are going to create a public static boolean function 
is full row so if the row is full and we are going to again use well an integer which is going to be our y so here again we are going to say for int x is equal to zero as long as x is less than our rows we are going to say plus plus x here we are going to perform a check if our well grid and the element that's at x and the y is equal to null then we are going to return well false because we did not or the row is not full because we have a null game object here otherwise here we are going to return true so return true so outside of the loop we are going to return true again we are testing here for each well row or for each element in the row if it's equal to null return excuse me false because that well row is not full we have null game objects otherwise return true each game object there is not null so as i said return true next what we are going to do here is we are going to create a public static void function delete whole rows and i've noticed one mistake i made here it's not going to be plus plus y but plus plus i so here for decrease row is going to be plus plus i and also let's name this function is row full so is row full makes more sense than is full row anyway here we are going to delete whole rows what we are going to do is we are going to say for int y is equal to zero as long as y is less than the column increment first y and then use it now we are going to test if our row is full so if is row full passing y so here we are passing the y and we need to finish our if statement here so if the row is full well we want to delete whole row so here we need to say delete row passing y or excuse me yeah y so i thought that it's i anyway passing the y to delete and also here we need to decrease rows from above so if we want to decrease the row from above what we need to do is we need to say y plus one this will decrease the row that's above our y practically so that's what we are doing here and we have explained what our decrease rows above function does it's calling this decrease row which we are doing or what we excuse me explained what it does actually and delete row we also know that it deletes the rows and here we need to say minus minus y in order to decrement y again because we are deleting the rows and that's what we are doing here so practically we are done with our matrix grid class finally setting it up so this is the last function that we are going to use here so our delete rows function as i said we are done with it we are going to stop here and we are going to continue in the next video